In section 6-4, we're going to go ahead and talk about the law of cosines. And so if you're given a triangle with side angle sides, so you have a side and then an included angle and then another side, you can use the law of cosines to solve it. Or if you're given all three sides of your triangle, so side, side, side. So let's go ahead and start with what the formula is for law of cosines. So you start with a triangle with angles A, B, C, and side opposite of angle A is little a, opposite of angle B is little b, and opposite of angle C is little c. And here's basically how the theorem works. If you have um, this side squared, side A squared, that equals the other two sides squared, so B squared plus C squared. It kind of looks like the Pythagorean theorem right now. And then what you're going to do is you're going to subtract off those same two sides, but twice them. So twice sides B and C times cosine of angle A. So basically, if you ha are finding side length A, you're going to use angle A, the one opposite. And then you're going to go ahead and take the other two sides squared and then plug them into the formula. So let's say you want to just find side B. So now you're going to go ahead and use this side right here. So if we're using that side, we're going to use angle B in the formula. So B squared is equal to the other two sides squared, A squared plus C squared, minus twice A times C times cosine of, since we're using B here, it's going to be angle B there. All right, so let's say you wanted to find side C. So side C squared is going to go ahead and be a squared plus B squared, so the other two sides squared, minus twice AB times, since we're finding side C, we're going to use angle C in the formula, cosine of angle C. So I'm going to give you an example of each of the cases. I'm going to start off with side angle side. So you'll notice I gave you a side and then an included angle and then the side. And I'm going to ask you to solve the triangle. So basically, you need to find angle A, you need to find angle C, and you need to find side B. So we're going to go ahead and use the formula. So since we want to find side B, we're going to use the formula B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared, so the other two sides squared, minus twice those same two sides, times cosine of angle B. Again, if you're finding side B, you're going to use cosine angle B. So you're going to plug everything in. So you have B squared is equal to side A is 22, so you're going to square it. Side C is 19, so you're going to square that. Minus twice 22 times 19 times cosine of what angle B is, which is 81 degrees. So all you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to type this whole thing into your calculator right there. So do it, pause this, and then at the very end, you're going to go ahead, since it's squared, you're going to square root to get side B. So when you type it in your calculator, you'll get 714.221. So now to get side B, you're going to go ahead and square root. So B should come out to be about 26.7 if you round to the nearest tenth. And that's not degrees, that's just 26.7. It's a side length. So now that you have all of your sides, what you can now do to solve for the two angles A and C is you can just use the law of sines. Most people like the law of sines better, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead and set up sine of 81 degrees over what we just calculated, 26.7, is equal to, let's go ahead and find angle A first, sine of angle A, and we know that side A is 22. So we're going to go ahead and cross multiply. After we cross multiply, we're going to go ahead and get sine A by itself. So we divide out the 26.7, and then what we're going to do is since we want to find angle A, remember whenever we find an angle, we're going to do sine inverse of this whole thing on the calculator. And angle A should end up being 54.4 degrees. So now that we have A is 54.4 degrees and we have two of the angles, we can just go ahead and do 180 minus these two guys to get angle C. And when we do that, angle C ends up being 44.6 degrees. So that's law of cosines with the side angle side case. So let's go to the side 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 case where you're given all three sides and your goal is to go ahead and find um, the angles. So why don't we just go alphabetically. Let's find angle A first. 
So that means we're going to have to use side A to start us off. So we're going to use A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus twice uh, BC times cosine of angle A. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. So when we do that, we end up getting A squared, which is 8 squared, equals B squared, which is 12 squared, plus C squared, which is 10 squared, minus twice those same two sides, 12 times 10, times cosine of the angle we're trying to find, angle A. So solving for angle A is kind of the tricky part of all of this. People are usually tempted to just type all of this in their calculator and then divide it out and then cos inverse. You can't do that because this portion right here is attached to the cosine. It's multiplying it. So you're going to have to take it step by step. So here's what you're going to go ahead and do. You're going to get 64 is equal to um, 144 plus the 100, so that's 244. So you can combine those two, that's okay. This is the part that's attached to the cosine. So you're going to multiply the 2 times the 12 times the 10 to get a minus 240 times cosine of angle A. So now I'm going to go ahead and get the 244 over to the other side, and then I'm going to have this right here all isolated on that side. So I'm going to get negative 180, and then this equals negative 240 times cosine of angle A. So now, since that's multiplying it, what I'm going to go ahead and do is divide out that negative 240. And when I end up doing that, I end up getting um, 0 0.075, and that equals cosine of angle A. So now that I'm finding an angle, I can just go ahead and cos inverse this answer, and I'll get angle A. And it ends up being it looks like 41.4 degrees. So that's angle A. So now that I have angle A, I can go ahead and solve for the rest of the angles in the triangle. So let's go ahead and find angle B. Now remember, since I have angle A and the side opposite of, it, opposite of it, I can go ahead and just use law of sines. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So sine of 41.4 degrees over the side opposite 8 is equal to, now let's go ahead and find angle B next. So I'll do sine of angle B over its opposite side, which is 12. And again, this is the same as before. You're going to cross multiply. You're going to go ahead and isolate the sine of B. And to get angle B by itself, divide out the 8, and then since you're want to find an angle, you're going to go ahead and sine inverse this whole thing. So again, try typing this on your calculator, see if you end up getting what I get. Half the battle is typing this thing into your calculator, so you should get angle B is 82.8 degrees. Now that I have two of the angles, it's really easy to find the third angle by just going ahead and subtracting those two from 180 degrees. So when I go ahead and do that, I end up getting angle C as 55.8 degrees. So check it out. Try typing those things in your calculator and see how it works. So the last thing for today's notes is an area formula. One last one. You can actually find um, the area of a triangle just knowing all three of its sides. And it's called, this guy named Heron is the one that um, came up with this formula. So here's what it is. Alright, so to find the area, it is equal to the square root, and notice how I made the square root really long, because there's a lots of stuff that's going to go in it. I'll tell you what S is in a minute, but there's an S in the formula. So you're going to multiply S times S minus side A, so you're going to have side A, times S minus side B of your triangle, times S minus the third side of your triangle, side C. So here's what S is. S is actually called the semi-perimeter or the half-perimeter. So what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to go ahead and take half, and if you remember perimeter, you add up all the sides, A plus B plus C. So you take the perimeter, take half of it, and that's what gets plugged into the formula. So one cool thing about this formula is you don't need a height to calculate the triangle. All you need to know is all three sides, and you can go ahead and use this. So here's an example. So I'm going to have you find the area of this triangle, side length 17, 12, and 14. And the first thing you need for the formula is the semi or half perimeter. 
So we're going to go ahead and take half of the perimeter of this triangle, so 17 plus 12 plus 14. And so we're basically taking half of 43. And so the semi-perimeter is going to equal 21.5. So that's half of 43. That's a 4 right there. So now when we go ahead and find the area, the area is equal to the square root. And what you're going to go ahead and do is plug in your numbers. So you're going to take the semi-perimeter, which is 21.5 times, and then you're going to do 21.5 minus each of the side lengths. It doesn't really matter which one's A, B, and C. So I'll start with 12, then 21.5 minus the next one, 17, times 21.5 minus 14, that last one. So you're going to go ahead and type all of this into your calculator right there. After you get an answer, you're going to go ahead and square root that whole thing. So check it out, see if you can do it. And um, I, I believe you're going to end up getting under the square root before you square root it, 6893.44. And when you end up square rooting that answer, you end up getting 83.03. And since this is area, it's going to be square units. So we just calculated the area of that triangle just knowing all the sides, no height. Okay, that's it. Have a in good section evening. 6-1, we're going to be talking about arc length and the area of a sector. And you can think of a sector as a piece of pie. So what we have is an angle. It makes up some portion of the whole circle, so we're going to call that theta. And we have a radius of the circle, R. And arc length is denoted by S. This is not a 5, it's S. And they use S in math for the length along the edge of the circle, the arc length. The one thing that you need to know is that your central angle theta, this guy right here, that angle, in order to use these formulas to find arc length and area, has to be in radians. So you can't use the formulas I'm about to give you unless you convert your angle if it's in degrees to radians. So it has to be in radians to use the following formulas. So let's start off with arc length. The formula to find the arc length S is S is equal to the radius of the circle times the central angle. So again, remember that the central angle has to be in radians right here. So in this example, you're asked to find the arc length of a circle that has a radius of 21 meters and a central angle of 15 degrees. So we're going to use this formula right here, but we're going to convert our angle to radians when we do so. So arc length is equal to the radius, which is 21, and then we're going to multiply it by our angle of 15 degrees, and if you remember from last chapter, to convert that, you're going to multiply by pi over 180 to convert that to um, radians. So when you go ahead and multiply that out, you multiply top to top, bottom to bottom, so I multiply the 21 times the 15, I get 315 over 180, which reduces to 7 pi over 4. And we'll say that the arc length is 7 pi over 4 meters, so that would be S. Okay, so moving on to finding the area of this sector. So again, we're not, this time we're going to find the area of that piece of pi. Um, the area is equal to 1 half your radius squared times that central angle. So in this next example, we're going to find the area of a sector that has a radius of 45 meters and a central angle of 4 degrees. So again, we have to convert our central angle to radians. So to find the area, we're going to go ahead and use 1 half. We're going to square our radius, which is 45, and then we just have to multiply it by theta. But in the process, we have to multiply 4 degrees times pi over 180. So we're basically just going to multiply all the tops, so all of these, over all of that. Here's what you get. So you get 8100 pi over 360. That's the 45 squared times the 1 times the 4. Leave it in terms of pi over 2 times the 180. And then when I go ahead and reduce that, I end up getting 45 pi over 2. So leave your answers in terms of pi. And because this is area, the units for area are not going to be meters, but square meters. We want to figure out how much area does this cover. 